Andrew McGahan for the MacLife.com here in SBG HQ, sitting alongside John Cavanagh. John, pleasure to see you again. Hello. Um, to me, every time I come into this gym, we'll st start about the gym first because it has undergone a serious transformation over the last few years, but you've been teasing at something on your Instagram the last while that it may not be home for much longer. Uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've kind of outgrown it. We're, we're kind of bursting at the seams, so um, I haven't announced it yet, but there is a move coming. Um, it'll be before the summer anyway. Um, staying local, going to be close by, but we're at, going somewhere where it's about a one and a half times the size of what I have now, so it would give us a room to stretch our legs a bit. I can remember when you moved into this facility that you had actually thought at the time that this would be the last one. You said you couldn't really envision a scenario where you would outgrow it. I believe that was 2013, so five years later. There's a lot of things that we haven't expected have happened. Yeah, so the, the, I moved from about uh, just under 4,000 square feet to 8,500 square feet, and it seemed uh, enormous to me at the time, you know, it was more than double. And now we're going from 8 to just under 15,000 square feet, so almost doubling size again. Um, it's a risk, but that's, that's how it's been the last 15 odd years, get to a certain size and then, and then go for it again, so time to move. I suppose that we'll keep we'll start off within Ireland and then maybe progress on to the international circuit. Um, recently, yourself and the IMMAA released a statement um, in regarding to fighter safety in the country. This is something that I care about quite a lot. I've seen it firsthand over the last couple of months. What sort of work is going in? How many fights have fallen apart due to the safety standards not being met by certain individuals leading up to a fight? So just really how annoying was it to have a government minister who will always have a larger platform by making a statement to say something as contradictory as that the IMMA are dragging their feet over legislation? Yeah. Um, I'll hold my hand up and say it's b because of our, like, they've got to realize they have p uh, personal assistants, they've got office staff, where everybody that's part of the committee has jobs. Everybody that's part of the committee has full time work to be doing. And we're trying to squeeze in a couple of hours a week 100% voluntary work. So I'll hold our hand up and say, we just didn't have the time to keep sending them updates. However, our details are online, we're not hard to find. They could have reached out and asked uh, before making quite a, quite a uh, heavy statement. Um, so I'll hold my hand up and say, maybe we didn't communicate as well with them, but we're, what's a better use of our four or five hours a month really that we can put together? getting work done or writing letters to, to, do, to keep updates. So if you look at the, the body of work that we've done in that period of time, and it's definitely mostly down to the committee, not me. They have, they've done extraordinary work, in my opinion. And if you go to a show in the last 18 months compared to going to a show five years ago, it's night and day, you know, what, what, what you're going to see in the lead-up to show, the, the post-fight uh, medical uh, procedure to get safe MMA cleared. Clearance on the night from the likes of Code Blue, the ringside physicians that we have on the night, uh, you know, ringside physicians and um, a trauma room on site, uh, bow mount on call in case if there's a knockout, a media brain scan, and then post fight medical care with, uh, with suspensions being issued and being uh, adhered to. Um, there, there is no comparison. We are doing everything that would be asked of us. If we were fully regulated, even going above that, I believe, um, we're already doing all that with no legal powers and with all the with the community working as a group because we can't make them do it, but everybody got on board and everybody is doing it. There did seem to be initially at the start, I know some kind of pushback and some reaction to it, but it seems that everyone has seemed to kind of realise that there will be no MMA in the country if we don't adhere to these standards, that it is at a critical stage now where safety is paramount, the fighters are, fighter safety is paramount, and realistically to avoid anything ever happening like happened in the boxing stadium that night. Yes, exactly. Um, you know, there's going to be grown uh, pains. There was, when you're trying to get a fighter safe MMA cleared, there is, a, there is a, some steps that have to go through, and fighters love fighting, but they hate doing paperwork. And uh, it just took a while, and we lost a lot of fights uh, initially. You know, fight week, you've got guys looking to get scans and bloods done and GPs and, and all of that. But as time went on and as we stuck to our guns and we didn't let a single fight go through that wasn't safe MMA cleared, word got around. You've got to get it done. And, it, you know, like bringing in any change, there's, there, there, there's resistance at the beginning. But I think everybody has seen the, 
uh, the benefits of it and, and everybody now just knows that's just how it is, that's just how the system works and it's, as of late, working great. Those are, we leave it at that within Ireland because our audience are predominantly a much bigger audience. So we'll just go back to the last time when I spoke to you. It was before the Mayweather fight in Las Vegas. At the time, it's, it probably seemed like, okay, I'm answering questions about my day-to-day -day life. So it's a fairly easy interview to give because you're in the moment at the time. But is there anything that you noticed after so many months removed from it that maybe only hit you two months after, three months after? What were your biggest takeaways from that experience? Um... Honestly, I think the biggest one was like after initially being very hard on ourselves was to really sit back and say, you know, did okay. Well, all, all, all things considered, did okay. Um, and I really enjoyed the process. Um, I didn't at the time. You don't really stop and enjoy it. But I, I, I'm, I'm very, very happy I have that memory. No one will ever be able to take that away to, to go to, um, you know, the home of, of Mayweather Promotions, um, to go into that world put together a training camp, still based around the, the core group of guys, go in there, have a good fight, 10 good rounds, had our moments, learn a lot from it, um, come away with a lot of people having a lot of respect for what we did. I, yeah, I, I can say nothing except that I enjoyed it, learned a lot, and uh, glad to be back in the MMA world. Speaking of the MMA world, if you're to believe, internet postings and memes and different things that are going back and forth, it seems that now more than ever, perhaps Floyd is considering a venture into mixed martial arts. You said 10 good rounds, uh, we give it a good go, but it would seem ignorant to suggest that a mixed martial arts fight would be anywhere near as close. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of reminded of early last year when I was asked about the boxing fight, and I, I was as doubtful as anybody. And I actually went as far as to stupidly tweet that I'll uh, do the Irish River Dance naked if, if... Did you? No, no, no. I, I said if Floyd steps in the octagon. Um, now I, I'm going to be honest, I'm practicing Irish dancing and I'm getting nervous about that. Um, in all seriousness, it's a crazy world we live in. Um, the, the fight that could never happen happened. And now this is a fight that can never happen. And it seems to be getting... You know, I don't know. There, there seems to be something forming there. Um, I would absolutely love it. <laughs> it would be, I think, same as yourself. I kind of come into, I come into martial arts not for um, to win UFC titles. I come into martial arts out of curiosity of martial arts and self defense. And really, what got me involved in in UFC one, what was so intriguing was from having done various martial arts my whole life, was to see how does a sumo do against a kickboxer? How does a jiu-jitsu guy go against a Wing Chun practitioner? And then after the, the first four or five UFCs, it became obvious what the styles were a waste of time and what training systems worked. And then it became more of a sport, and that's great, I enjoy it, and that's what I spend most of my time doing. But I still like looking at the odd YouTube video, Karate Master Challenges Jiu-Jitsu Guy. And this reminds me of the early days of, you know, one of the best boxers ever against one of the best MMA fighters ever. What will happen? We all know what happened, but still, it, I'm not going to say that it doesn't get the curiosity going. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a throwback to the UFC one, two, and three days. Um, more of a spectacle than a sport, um, but I will be. It would be fun fight to be involved in. To me, it seems that a lot of fans can be fickle in many ways. They'll say, no, oh God, what a, what a shock. What an accusation. Well, from the point of view that they'd say, no, he has to come back to MMA. And that's the one thing that I can never, the one thing that I would 100% agree with is that as Connor's career grew, and as even as all of your careers grew, people no longer asked for things. They started to tell you what you should do. It's like, Connor McGregor shouldn't box Floyd Mayweather, he has to fight MMA. It's like, he doesn't have to do anything. And now that it's coming back to MMA potentially, and if the Floyd fight did happen, people would say, oh no, but it has to be against a legitimate MMA fighter. So it's like you used to say in your early days, the question always changed whether it was a karate guy, a jiu-jitsu guy, a judo guy, it seems like now people are just being fickle at this stage. I'm not too sure if you, if you agree with that sentiment, but to me, any mixed martial arts fight for Conor is better than no mixed martial arts fight for Conor. Yeah, um, okay, so uh, a lot said there. Sorry. Uh, okay, I guess Conor is a little bit of, of a victim of his own success in terms of he brought a, a much wider 
audience to MMA than there was before. You know, if you just have to look at the numbers. That's not my opinion. That's just facts. So I think no matter what he does, he's going to get there be criticism online. Um, now, in saying that, I still reckon he probably sleeps quite soundly. So all I think all we can do as people is try to do what we want to do. And we have to be very careful in telling other people what they should be doing. Um, I, I, I think it's drifting into the territory of a life coach that you think your life is so in order, you can tell someone else how they should be living their life. Um, now, let's, let's be realistic here. If the fight was to happen, I would nearly be saying to Connor and pushing Connor to say, let's book that two or three weeks before a real one. Because we can go in and, you know, I, I'd almost insist in that fight that Connor just shoots a double early. Because I'd be almost annoyed if he just went in there and pulled him away quickly with MMA striking. Yeah. We need to see jiu-jitsu in that fight. He needs to be in the mound, <laughs> slapping him about a little bit. So it would be such like a straight, I, I think, such a straight, easy fight that we could train realistically for it and then do, do a competitive MMA fight on the back end of it, you know? So I think it's one of those ones we could squeeze in getting ready for a fight. I know that probably comes across a certain way, but I can only say what I'm thinking. I can only say what I feel and what... A sort of a vision that I can I can kind of see happening. That if that was to happen, it's not the type of fight that Connor's going to have to do a real specific twelve weeks for, and then take three or four months off afterwards. You know, um, and and completely get ready for another one. You could kind of do that one as a as a you know to fit it in be on the night of his real fight. Well, with <laughs> UFC two twenty three, that's that's a vi that's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's so many articles there you've just given websites there so they'll be happy with you for another while when it comes when it comes to UFC 223 in Brooklyn um, still no official word from the UFC over what the fight between Khabib and Tony is for what it's going to be um, but we know that they are booked to fight Artem Lobov has also been put in that card as well will you be keeping an eye on the main event what are your even thoughts on that as a matchup um, and is it is it even for the real title, as long as Conor's saying he's ready to come back to fight? Um, so, first of all, am I, am I looking forward to watching that fight? Yes, very much so. I may have pushed Artem to be on that card for that reason. Um, now, um, is it for the real title or not? I think that's, that's a question for fans and forums to decide. You know, that's, that's the fun of the game. You're watching, and is it for the title, is it not? I think the reality is, no matter what anyone says, is the, the winner of that contest will not feel quite there until they beat Conor. And that, that's just a given. They won't feel quite there financially, or it won't quite answer the questions that they themselves have for themselves or, or, or fans have. Now, like I said, I'm, uh, I'm 41. I'm not going to get too bogged down in, in titles and stuff like that. I think that's a fun game for fans to go back and forth with. And that's that's part of the fun you buy the pay-per-view and you can argue with your buddies um but yeah so i'm looking forward to watching that fight if it happens what's is this the oh and three it's the fourth time they've tried the to make the fight time. okay so this is the fourth time it's being scheduled i have a horrible feeling it's not going to happen i have a really horrible feeling it's not going to happen i really hope it does i really hope it does putting connor completely out of the picture it's just a very interesting fight um, as somebody that's a fan of grappling, it's a very interesting matchup with a, with a looser submission-heavy game versus a tight control game. That, to me, is just a fight that is very, very interesting for me to see. Um, yeah, I hope I'm wrong on this one, but I, I, I'm, I, did, I just see it falling apart. And within that, there is one other person who's in the mix who's recently said he'll see us around April or May time. Nate Diaz had taken a hiatus since the second Conor fight. I know that back in the early days, maybe after the second fight, you had said that a trilogy would be something that you're interested in. But now, uh, another line that you've said over the years, options are always a good thing. So that there are considerably either Khabib, Tony or Nate all ready for Conor regardless. In terms of a potential Nate fight, let's say these two do fight, a yes. uh, five-round war, extended injuries... Would you be happy then for a Connor Nate trilogy fight to happen then? Or what would you prefer? So, um, definitely for the first six months, I thought everybody would have saw the same as me. There's just a beautiful uh, 
relationship between Connor and, and Nate in terms of just, just a great back and forward with them outside the cage and inside the cage. It, it's, a, it's, it's a lovely fight. I, it's five round rematch. It's still one of my favorite fights. Um, that being said, I did assume that Nate would be as busy or busier than Connor. And, you know, Connor's had an MMA fight and a boxing fight since, and we haven't seen Nate since. So I started changing. And then there was, and you could see it the kind of against amongst the fans who are the, who I still, I've always said, and I still do believe, are the most important factor because they pay for the pay per views. That's what they, they want to see. And you can see it was clearly becoming they wanted to see either Khabib or Tony in there rather than Nate, probably for the same reason that we, Nate didn't keep busy. Um, so I don't think it would be quite right for that to happen before the uh, winner of, of Nate Tony because all Connor Nate Tony have kept busy and um, Nate hasn't so I think Nate should get one in in the meantime um, him or him and Woodley I, I hear there's rumors of that or him against a good uh, a good lightweight and you know if, if, the, if the MMA gods smile it would be a victory for him Kind of fight to win her down, and then you, you've got this this amazing super fight for New Year's Eve. It nearly something. seems too perfect that something like that couldn't go together. As surely knowing MMA, there will be fallouts along the way on that. Two quick things. Um, one, I just want your personal take on one thing in particular. Richie Smullen over at the Ultimate Fighter at the moment. Um, in my opinion, probably one of the lowest ranked guys win like the record lowest. ever on the show, or just I, on I this know, season. I know this season, I know in this season, he's the he's the least experienced pro. That must be something that you're looking forward to and excited for because he seems when he fights or even just from hearing people talking about him grappling, he is far beyond what his record would suggest. Yeah, I mean, there will be, he's the least experienced pro, in fact. He's also a pro that's done more rounds with Connor and Artem um, and, and a lot of experienced featherweights and lightweights in the gym. So he has a, you know, he's a huge amount of, of gym time. Now, that doesn't always translate to competition, so it's going to be very interesting to see how he holds up um, in there with a lot more seasoned pros com in competition terms. Um, and then we also have Brad Katona, new enough uh, signee to the to the team, 6-0, uh, uh, very good. Um, he's normally bantamweight. He's gone in at 145, um, and someone has gone in at 155, so we've got we've two irons in the fire, as they say. And with that to finish, because we started on the the health issue within Irish MMA and I suppose I'd like to just finish on what you are implementing within SVG now whether it's safe sparring in terms of um, minimal contact but working on improving your technique or the sparring sessions that you're doing now where you're overseeing the sparring sessions have you noticed how your job has evolved as a coach because now you're watching backgrounds of these guys sparring instead of standing on the edge of the mat watching eight pairs of people spar at the same time is this the key for SPG's success into the next couple of years? About, or is this a John Kavanaugh blueprint that's going on at the moment? So we're, we're, ever, in, we're ever evolving. Um, like I've only in the last week, I completely changed my approach to the MMA team practice. Um, my MMA team know what that means. I'm not going to go too much into that because I want to, I, I, I'm, I always try to make my changes and I always try to make my decisions based on evidence only. Not opinion. Opinions to me, are, I don't really care about your opinion. I care what you can prove. Um, so we'll do this method for a couple of months, and then I'll make changes uh, as necessary. So ever evolving. As for sparring, yes, of course. I, I've, I've never been a fan of, of, of damaging each other in sparring. Now, I get, I get this a lot on Twitter. There's not to say that you shouldn't, every now and then, big gloves, big shin pads, head guard on, and go hard. Why? Because that's sometimes you could get overwhelmed on competition night if someone goes heavy on you in the first minute and you've only done drills or flow sparring. And just that first minute, big overhands and, and you get clipped and, and you, you get that shock. So you want to get that shock out of the way, but without taking damage. Because if you spar like that with smaller gloves in, in the gym, you'll never actually get to a fight. You're always going to be injured. And we, 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 how many times have you seen that in, in some of the teams? Um, so... Definitely get rid of the shock factor with the big gloves on, the big shin pads, just to get used to that intensity. But if you actually want to improve, it's got to be done in a way that you're not nervous to try a new move. You want to try a new kick on me, and as you're getting better at it, but every time you make a mistake, I punish you by knocking you out, you won't throw the next round. So 
we have to get the balance right. Um, so yeah, we're, we're always making changes. I, I do try to uh, oversee every single MMA spar in the gym. That to me is, obviously, if you're going to get ready for MMA fights, your most of your time training has to be on MMA. It sounds a very simple statement, but people are off spending half their week doing strength and conditioning and boxing training and everything. It's MMA. You do need your individual support, but it's MMA. So yeah, my MMA sparring to me is the number one uh, area of focus for me as a coach. Wonderful. And finally, a prediction. If How many more years before John Kavanaugh outgrows this new gym that's coming in 2018? <laughs> because for some reason, whether it's watching amateur Irish MMA at the moment or watching guys travel from all corners of the globe just to come here and train and be a part of SBG, it seems like 15,000 square feet may not be too much in a couple of years' time. Yeah, uh, uh, we've gone from having only recently, when I say recently, I, I guess I, I say I moved here with around about 15 fighters on the books. And last check, we had 64 fighters. Um, so we're, we're, we're getting, I guess, a little bit of a good reputation for being somewhat of a center for, for European fighters, a lot of French fighters. And we just had a, a recently joined, um, terrible names, but the, the Connor uh, impersonator, Amir. Uh, Amir, who's got a massive following and, you know, Art, Artem's just back from Russia, where there's a lot of excitement over there about a lot of fighters coming over here. So it's kind of a good stopgap. You know, I guess back in the day, it was like if you're a European-based fighter, you go to America. Um, now European-based fighters have somewhere to come that they can come for a short period of time to get sparring in with, with a lot of high-level pros. Just did some good rounds there with, with a, a young 6 and one Dutch fighter. Um, and it's, you know, it's a little bit cheaper coming to Dublin rather than going all the way to America. They can, you know, it's shorter travel and so on and so on. Um, but I, to answer your question, <laughs> I genuinely hope I don't have to move again. It's 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 fairly traumatic. Um, so yeah, I hope this move. I'm actually I'm actually signing a very quite a long long term lease on this. So I'm hoping this gym sees me out. Wonderful, John. Thank you very much. Good luck.